Over the last 30 years. In the last 30 years. Over the last 30 years. Over the last 30 years. Well, 30 years is a long time and we've learned a lot. The human development approach was developed in 1990 in the first human development report and it came after a decade in which countries had been adjusting and there'd been big deflation. The point about human development is that it's not enough just to look at income. You have to look at the broader choices facing people, how they live, what sort of education they have, and beyond that, what are their freedoms, what's their political freedom, what their society is like. It's a much broader approach to assessing progress. You can see it in a way in the Millennium Development Goals, and now we have the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. We're looking at a much more diverse set of objectives. And against that background, there has been really considerable success in terms of basic human development. If you look at health, education, and incomes, which are measured together in the Human Development Index, you find that every country in the world made progress. Uh, Middle-income countries did particularly well, but low-income countries made progress and high-income countries made progress. Economic growth provided them the resources for this progress. But economic growth is not sufficient, and we find some countries that did well on economic growth but failed on the human development front and were unable to sustain that growth as a result. We find, in fact, that human development progress is important in itself but also essential for progress on economic growth because you need healthy, educated people to achieve economic growth. So looking at the successful countries, we find three essential ingredients. Social expenditure on health and education, economic growth, as I said, and good distribution of economic growth. It's not enough just to have growth. So that was for basic human development. So we see progress on all, all those, but we don't see progress everywhere on the wider dimensions of human development. For example, political freedoms, some countries made progress, but not all. And climate change, there's been regress, not progress. One of the questions that I've been working on a lot is what causes failure in human development? And one of the major aspects is conflict. And so a big research agenda, which has been going on for a long time, is what are the determinants of that conflict? How can we stop conflict? Because that would really help. And we can see today that we're not being very successful about that. And in doing that work, I've been looking a lot at uh, horizontal inequalities or inequalities between groups, ethnic or religious groups, which are often the cause of conflict. And what can one do about that? Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years, I think the critical challenge is to integrate the climate change agenda, the environment agenda, sustainability agenda with human development. We have got to rethink our measurement of progress so it incorporates the environmental aspect, the sustainability aspect. Instead of having income today and health today and education today, we incorporate environmental considerations. So people treat that as the objective instead of just human development of people today.